You've reached Hall in Mockery. This episode, we're going to talk about the police. We did last week. Yeah. A little bit. We did this week. Well, we're oh, hold about on, hold to. on. Sorry, sorry. What's that? I got... What? I got to I gotta go. What? I got to go. Oh. Thank you. Uh, I've been Mark Norman. This has been great. <laughs> I'm sorry about this. What, I what go. is... What is... Oh, actually, okay. What's up? Um, okay, so... Um, actually um everything's fine um you all need to leave immediately it's scary but everything's gonna be okay hold on hold on hold on hold on whoa oh okay this isn't gonna i'm sorry this isn't gonna be like last week's show where i actually did leave okay okay this is all a big setup it's a big it's a stunt it was a stunt you all don't have to stop watching this episode no but, uh, and I'm sorry, I had to do it in the middle of a sentence that you were saying, but that's kind of how these things go. Yeah. When you are planning to have bodyguards come take you off set, make everyone leave, you have to do it in the middle of, it can't seem like, well, that's too convenient that it happened right now. Right. It has to be awkward. It has to make everyone feel uncomfortable. It has to make the viewers mm-hmm. uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. It has to make the venue uh, give everyone their money back. Mm-hmm. For something akin to uh, a walking phoenix uh, type type thing. So, should we catch everyone up on what we're talking about? I'll pull up the article because I didn't. Uh, I saw the so Mark Norman, a stand-up comedian, was doing a set at a little comedy club. Let's go to let's go to the source. Comedian Mark Norman rushed off stage at New York City Comedy Club. Yes. Audience evacuated. This is from TMZ, okay? Should I just should I get should the 30 I, mile zone. We know Mark Norman, right? He's famous for his TikTok clips. Yeah. I've seen him live. It was funny. I think we but talked uncomfortable. about uncomfortable. Right? Yeah. So you've seen him and you've seen him do his little All right, now we'll do some crowd work. Because he needs to get his clips, right? Yeah, at the end, he says, all right, do you have any suggestions? And someone says, everyone shouts something out, and then he hears one phrase that he has jokes for, and he says, ah, Trump? That old bastard. (laughs) Hey. Oh, Biden? Yeah, he's old as hell. Hey. Tennis shoes. Anything else? The Buddha. Uh, The... Uh, uh, pl- uh, electricity plugs. Fox ex- News. Yeah, I tell you what. So that's that's part of what he does. But he's funny, right? He's funny. He's a good joke writer, I think. So he was doing a he was doing a set in New York City, and then some commotion started happening. Uh, he was, I guess, asked to leave the stage. Some people came out. Yes, he's he's doing jokes. Mm-hmm. Someone comes on stage, stands next to him, and then get, comes off stage. Yes, he goes, "What what's going on?" Yes, he, he says, "What's going on?" He does a couple of jokes about the situation at mm-hmm. hand. Then he's whisked away yes. in the middle of his stand-up set, and it made for a scary moment because the audience was eventually asked to GTFO too. <laughs> so the comedian was in the middle of a set. At the New York Comedy Club, famous, famous. He gets whisked away. He'd make some jokes about it. It's pretty freaky. You can tell the audience started panicking because nobody was saying what was happening and if anyone was in danger. Mm. Eventually, they were asked to leave by the producer of the show, although no proper explanation was given. So here's the update. Look, go watch the clip if you haven't because it's it is it does seem scary. But also funny because the lady who comes on stage after he's taken off makes it a million times worse. But <laughs> two forty nine p.m. We're given an update. Okay. I don't know of what day. As it turns out, we were all duped by whatever happened no! at Mark Norman's set last night. 
Because now the comedy club itself is saying it was a staged stunt. No! They posted an apology about causing a panic and noted that there was some filming going on and that it was all part of some production. They're offering a free show to those who got the boot. So that's that. That's the last update we have. I don't know if I buy that. I don't know if I buy that. And if it's true, this is where the I fear that the TikTokification of of stand up <laughs> has reached a reached yeah. a fever pitch. Yeah. Because now it's it's going past did that because I mean even when you see a clip where it's like someone threw a shoe at someone's head. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Your favorite your favorite comedian's up there, he's like, I oh, yeah, mission accomplished. <laughs> And he's doing stand up, and then a shoe gets thrown in his head. All the comments will be like, "Staged. They did it for clout. This was for clout." Yeah. And then the comedian says, "Honestly, who throws a shoe?" <laughs> so now we don't even know if people are getting attacked at shows because everyone's got to film all their shows and post the most hype worthy clips. Yeah. Now it sounds like we're even just making up some crazy thing that happened to Mark Norman. So you think this was for TikTok? I think someone is trying to turn it into something like. Comedian gets whisked off stage during show, sad. I don't think he needs that, though. I don't think he does it. But what do you do if you're just you're just going to keep posting clips of you doing crowd work? Yeah. I don't know. I think at some point you've got a Mr. Beastify. You've got to come out <laughs> with a chocolate bar. I or, don't know. I don't know if he's if he's that kind of guy, though. This is what the comedy club said verbatim. Okay. Regarding last night, okay. which is also kind of cool because it's like when you your friends post that they went to like a, the new mexican restaurant last night mm-hmm. and they're like about last night yeah and there's like one tequila two tequila three tequila floor and then it's them sitting with like uh, i don't know your friend who doesn't really they stop reaching out to you and oh whatever yeah. regarding last night mm. We've received a handful of inquiries regarding a viral clip of our club being evacuated last night. First and foremost, nobody was harmed or injured. The disruption was part of filming by at high underscore high underscore the producers that rented out our venue for the night. So the producers rented out our venue for the night, which brought in Mark Norman. He's complicit. So (laughs) since that took on a bit of a wild narrative. The producers? The only musical you like? We may be sitting down, but we're giving you a standing ovation. Mark Norman. (laughs) If you were in attendance, we'd love to host you for an actual show for free. This sounds like a cluster. So the whole thing was staged. I mean, even the, the, but the audience wasn't staged. No. If you were in attendance for the taping, we'd love to host you for an actual show for free. Please email us. So you got your babysitter. You got your car filled with gas, that famous New York gas that's so expensive. <laughs> you parked, right? You paid that's for why that. the bagels taste different. They taste so different because of all the gas that they put in them. I have it shipped out to put in my Trump ice. <laughs> Trump ice water now made with gas. Beautiful New York gas. $86 million. I'm actually bankrupt. <laughs> I don't have anything. They took everything. They took everything. So now you you are inconvenienced twice. First you went yeah. to well, and it's like well, I wanted to go see Mark Norman. Mm-hmm. Now I guess I hate him because <laughs> he ruined my night of going to see him, or someone did. Hi hi maybe at hi hi. Yeah, we need to look that up. Yeah, this is, is this one of our patented investigative journalist episodes? Yeah, if you loved our our rabbit hole dive deep dive down the deep dive down the deep dive. <laughs> Deep dive, down to deep dive, dive, down to deep, deep dive, down to deep. Dive, dive, down to deep. Dive. I just remembered someone told us in a comment to stop being so cute. Oh, we yes. Stop. Sorry. But we did a very deep dive into the, the uh, I guess, the Girl Scout. The Girl Scout cookies operation. The, yeah, I mean, I guess you would say the deep, the deep state of. Of the G. S. <laughs> C. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I did high underscore. I was at underscore. High underscore. But now I, I maybe this is a maybe this is an X. Maybe it's not an Insta. Is it high? Like I'm so high right now. Just H I. Oh. At high underscore high. High. But they put this high. They put this on Instagram. Production. I think they changed their name. 
I think they. I think. Oh wait, here it is. Hi hi. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Okay, so hi underscore hi underscore, which is it? Tell me this is. That's what that says. Yes. H i underscore h i underscore. I go to at h i underscore h i underscore. They have nine posts. They have eight thousand followers, mm-hmm. and their uh, bio says. Would you risk it all to have it all? Then DM us hi hi. Oh, look, one of their one of their reels is Comedy Club. It's the video, by that the way. That guy looks like a douchebag. The guy that gets up on stage. Yeah. He's in on this. He's Mr. Hype. So it really is just they're just reposting all the clips of people saying, what just happened? Oh. And then they have another one. Then they have courtside seats at a game. And there's two people dressed as furries um, kind of playing with each other. <laughs> they seem to be a viral marketing team. Yeah, because Donald Glover shared, also shared the thing. Yeah, this is this is where I'm getting... Maybe Mark Norman didn't have anything to do with it. I don't know if he did. How did they produce the show and he's doing it? I mean, I guess if you're a comedian, you get asked to do a show. Yeah. They say, I mean, you're we'll, just going. We'll pay you. To a comedy in, club. That he's in, probably been to a lot. Yeah. And they're probably saying, we'll give you $100,000 to do a show tonight. Or if this is true, I, I'm now seeing that Donald Glover shared the clip mm-hmm. online and said, at high, high. Perhaps this is a... Like you said, a walking phoenix, mm-hmm. maybe a big, a, a more produced stunt that will eventually come out. Mm-hmm. And Donald Glover is a producer or something like that. Yes. He's also building the hype. And maybe yeah. in that case, I would say Mark Norman probably would agree to be in something a little more high profile than just making viral TikToks. I don't think he's at the he's at a level now. I think that he wouldn't need to do like for one for one talk yeah one talk i'm gonna ruin or like partially hurt my reputation Mm -hmm. but for a bigger sort of artistically driven jackass sketch Mm -hmm. i'll ruin my reputation but it is interesting because we do have people that everyone has their phones now so everyone can just post about that's what they want it's kind of like walking phoenix (laughs) It really is. What is it? Or do you think it's for like a new Donald Glover music video? Something like that. He's probably. because the interneting again. Well, did you see Donald Glover put a trailer out for the 21 Savage story? It was like a trailer for a movie where he and the huh. kid from Stranger Things play 21 Savage. <laughs> I didn't see that. And then, like, this was a couple weeks ago and it looks bad. And then, yeah. like, a couple of days ago, 21 Savage said, oh yeah, that was a joke. <laughs> that's not happening. So I think we, <laughs> I think he might just be in his uh, having a little fun with strange. you. Uh, yeah, once you get to a certain level of fame, you can put on the I'm not famous anymore mm-hmm. uh, grocery bag on your head. <laughs> you can watch your movies and laugh and cry with the audience. Yeah, You can plagiarize. You can wear the fits. The, or the fits can wear you, honestly. Sure. So um, that happened, and we just needed to – I think it's important for us to comment on important things that are going on in the world. Yeah. So uh, what were you saying? Um, I watched this documentary called Victim Slash Suspect. Okay. Where um, the police turn sexual assault accusations into arrests against the women. Mm-hmm. For false accusations. Yep. Were you, was it incredibly frustrating? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, of course. It's on Netflix. How can you even get arrested for that? You lied to us. Is that it? Yeah, like, pretty much. Well, they. You're obstructing justice. They follow a few different stories and uh, trigger warning to all. But uh, there's one in particular where they're just telling the story of this girl who, you know, came to the police right. and. They, you know, a super long interrogation. She's a young girl. And the guy who done it to her is a big 
kind of a big shot in the city. Right. So they they somehow twist her mind into thinking. Well, not even twist her mind. That of course these women don't want to talk about it. Yep. Because something terrible just happened to them, but they have to. Mm-hmm. Because what else are you going to do? And the people that are that chose to serve and protect are too lazy or want to cover up for their buddies or I, I just, it just, it boggles my mind. And yeah, it's frustrating as hell as you're watching it. Cause you're like, you don't have to do this job. Yeah. If, like you don't want the paperwork of like in, investigating something. What, what, what are you scared of? And cop, they don't get paid that much. Right? Like you're not like, I'm a cop because I make $200,000 a year. Right. No, that can't be it. Like, don't you work weird hours? Yeah. And you, half the time you don't do anything. It's just crazy. But yeah, I mean, it's just, well. What's that on? That's on Netflix. You can check it out if you want to. Now, the thing about this, it it is very good and it does make you mad. And you should show it to all your people in your life who are like, isn't the Me Too movement kind of stupid or whatever? And you're like, just, oh, just shut, just inform yourself a little bit by watching a TV show. Well, then you get, those are the same people that are going to go, well, why, why'd she wait so long to say that? Well, but that's the, that's the thing. That's the thing. Then they, well, just watch the, that's th- you just it. screaming at that's <laughs> me screaming at my uncle. That's the thing. That's the thing. That's why I'm showing this to you. Yeah. And he's like the tryptophans kicking in from the toy. <laughs> and I'm like, no, stay away. <laughs> You got to hear this because that's the thing. But yeah, no, just, uh, yeah, I won't say anymore, I guess. So never mind. Take away the trigger warning. I won't tell you. (laughs) (laughs) But the thing about this, uh, this particular movie, though, is documentary. (laughs) documentary. It also is told through the lens of this journalist who's writing the article mm-hmm. about this and doing the research with her little journalist group. Yeah. And then it is kind of at the end, you're kind of like, cause they like wrap up her story. You're like, so is this about you being good? Oh yeah. <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, it's I, sort of a Ronan Farrow. Yeah. It's kind of like, like, I write books now. <laughs> like, Hey, you're supposed to be on, you're supposed to be a good guy. And you should get credit. Like <laughs> that's the thing. Like this, This lady seems Mm -hmm. to be doing it because she wants to change something that's bad about the world. But then the movie at the end, you're kind of like, so the movie was all about you, huh? Mm. She high fives the mirror. (laughs) And just like journalists are actually better than cops, which is true. (laughs) Does it help? Like when you watch that stuff, like we talked about. No, it just pisses me off. uh, was Was the other one American Nightmare or whatever? Yeah. Also, by the way, the names, you're running out of names. We said you're running out of things to talk about. American <laughs> Nightmare could be anything. Yeah. Okay. I just had one last night. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, so It first, used to be called the American Dream. But you got to be asleep to believe it. <laughs> American Nightmare sounds like a Green Day album. What? So uh, you watch the documentary, and I think halfway through I said, I out loud turned and said, these police should be arrested. The police should be arrested. I think even more than that. Well, but no, then that you, one's but pretty it's bad. Like, isn't <laughs> that this one's going, pretty bad. <laughs> isn't this, like, is this going to help anything? No. They all can't still you have show jobs. that in court, but then they'll just be like, we, I don't know, we put them on leave. Yeah. We put them on paid leave. It's fine. We did the little shell game where we put them in a different district. It's sort of the, uh, and this is going to get. Maybe two percent of our listeners mad. It's kind of the Catholic, Catholic priest does a yeah. bad thing, and so they move him to a different church. Yeah. So what? He's got fresh fish. I mean, what are we? What are we doing here? It's sick. The and it. He's it, like. He's like. That's fine with me. Fresh fish. <laughs> it go, but only on Fridays. Yeah. Or yeah. wait, what is it? Anyway, <laughs> you. <laughs> we ask the question: Why do they do it? It is. And it, it almost seems like a cliche at this point, mm-hmm. but it is the power, isn't it? Absolute power corrupts absolutely. And we even see in, in shows like Jury Duty where we say, 
this is almost Stanford prison experiment. Like they yep. put him in charge at the end and he's sort of, he takes on that role, right? Mm-hmm. He says, if I'm going to be the leader of this jury, you need to do this. You need to do this. And we go, look how scary a nice man can become. Yeah. I mean, he's not, but you just think of, <laughs> tell this kid that they can beat up someone. And then they just watched him do that. They're like, see that you told that kid, he's a prison guard. You tell him the other kid's a prisoner and he'll just beat him up. Yeah. It's sick. It's sick. It's sick. It's the power to be a cop. You get to drive around. You have your lights on for no reason. Just because you want to go through a uh, a red light. I almost said black light. That's for If you want to go through a black light, you need to get to your nearest head shot, brother. Don't talk to the priest. (laughs) Hot priest. Do you? Oh, I can't fall in love with you because then I'd fall in love with you. (laughs) And she's like, okay, that's something we need to talk about. (laughs) And everyone's like, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but don't you but, think? But, but. <laughs> that's what she wants for my priest. <laughs> and he's like, look at me, chickity 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 bum bum, <laughs> chickity chickity bum bum. <laughs> it's shaking his butt cheeks, but separate from each other. They're like two shifting plate tonics. Do you think that not to not to kiss the boot, lick mm-hmm. the boot? Yes. Um, for all my fashy little fish yes, friends. Yes, lay your life down on that thin blue line. <laughs> Do you think there's also something to be said? It's like when you maybe have health anxiety mm-hmm. and you have... What's that called? Necrophilia? I think that's it. I think that's something else. Well, hypochondria. We need to talk you... about. <laughs> we need to later. talk about. <laughs> What's something we need to talk about later? <laughs> that's good. Who is that? I don't know. That's awesome. Mark Dormand. You, you have like a wart mm-hmm. on your elbow and you're like, hmm, wart on elbow cancer. Yep. And you search it <laughs> and then you get a bunch of hits that you're like, I thought it was just a wart. Doctor thought it was just a wart. Went and got a third opinion because mm-hmm. the second doctor was unavailable. Mm-hmm. So I got a third opinion. Turns out they biopsied it. It was cancer. Turns out it's stage five cancer. I'm dead. I'm already dead. Yep. As I'm typing this. What do? <laughs> and then you read like four of those and you're yeah. like, well, now I have wart cancer mm-hmm. on my elbow cancer. Mm-hmm. I'm going to die now. But then you have to zoom out a little bit mm-hmm. and remember the 1% of terrible stuff that happens is what is reported. Mm-hmm. The 1% is what is sensationalized. Don't you think most doctors catch it mm-hmm. or, or we'd it's all nothing? Be <laughs> yeah. Or most people go to the doctor. They say, well, that's just a wart. They cut it off mm. and you don't need to make a documentary about it. Yep. You don't need to tell anyone on the forums. Yes. We online. don't, we don't make the documentaries about the every day. Right. So, or do we <laughs> point being, I it, think, yeah, While I believe deal. that cops are pigs mm. oink, oink, and a cab, of course. Yes. I also think probably, hopefully, mm-hmm. I guess, hopefully, maybe not probably. I, I have to hope. I think, I think we all have to hope that more of them are doing their best mm-hmm. than for what it seems like from all these goddamn documentaries <laughs> actively trying to hurt people. Hey, Damon. I'm like a, I'm like a mix between his two stories. I'm a wart and a hog. <laughs> hey, that's that's great, buddy. <laughs> Whatever it sounds like <laughs> from the remake. I'm Julio. I'm in the jungle, Julio. So yeah, well, it's like I told a I told a, a friend that he came to me. He was down, and he said it's not you, but he said I'm getting um, bad comments on my youtube video could you watch it and tell me what you think and i said sure and i said but what i said is you have to remember the people taking the the time out of their day to say something bad Mm -hmm. many people can see something good and you just observe it right yeah but it's a special situation you could have a million people watch it but if you see i have five comments on they're all bad yeah well everyone else could have liked it yeah Every other cop could just. There's a lot of. Uh, good, there's a lot of people that think they're good cops. 
Let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, you know the good news? We yeah. don't we don't have to worry about people leaving bad comments yeah. on YouTube. That's crazy. Yeah. It was it certainly wasn't us I'm talking about. No. It wasn't me looking in the mirror around four in the morning just shaking, sweating a cold sweat on my brow. I'm like it could be a million people that watch the video. You don't know. And I look and it says 14 views and there's 14 comments and they're all bad. And like, but a lot of people use VPNs now. And you don't know who's watching. Someone's trying to watch the mask. So they have to say I'm in Canada so they can watch the mask. And then after that, they watch a little call in mockery and they, it just doesn't get picked up. And they loved it. Which of your friends is a YouTuber? Miranda sings. Oh, She's like, do you think this ukulele makes me look silly? <laughs> and I was like, Miranda, everything makes you look silly. And then we're just like, tip through the tulip. I'm sorry for sending a bikini to a child. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the show started. All right. We got some Liquid Death in the studio today. Thank you, Liquid Death, Thank for you. sponsoring this episode. LD. What'd you get? They have some new ones for spring. Yeah. Um, I got Unparalievable. Yeah, I got... Uh, Convicted melon. <laughs> well, did you watch anything else? I also oh. started, I watched a documentary um, that was, I believe there's not much that I turn off halfway through. Mm. There's not much I give up on. I will, I'll, I'll watch it. Maybe sometimes I'll tune out a little if it's some old movie that I know that's just bad mm -hmm. and you're kind of watching it, but I rarely will just turn something off unless I just have to and do something else. I wa I started watching the documentary room 237, And mm. even now I hope that's correct since I'm reading the book, but it is about the, he reads too. <laughs> can Ladies you, can and you a guy that do both watch bad documentary <laughs> Reads a book and can't remember the name of the main thing from both of them. Room 237, which is a documentary based on The Shining, but it's a it's a not a it's a unofficial documentary made by a fan. Went to several film festivals where he, the filmmaker interviewed a number of people that basically it, it dives into the conspiracy theory side of The Shining. Right. The right. pattern on the carpet. Means Kubrick. This. Yes, he's. We all know Kubrick is a freak. I guess because <laughs> he just thought makes he was good films yeah, or something. So actually, he's crazy. And so they they took people that said, well, actually, because you know we know that the moon landing was faked, and he filmed it, and he filmed it, which is why Danny, the son in the movie, mm. has a rocket ship on his <sighs> sweater. Stuff like that. He's leaving little hints. There's a rocket going to the moon on his sweater, which is him dropping a hint uh, that he filmed the moon landing mm. instead of, I guess, just telling us before he died, which I never understand when all the, it's like, why not just say something before you die? It's like, well, cause then they, they said they'll, they'll kill his family. It's like, well, he, what if he doesn't have, or like, yeah. so are they So they're going to kill his daughter and we're all going to know. Yeah. He already told us Yeah, what you're going to pay. You're going to get payback. You're going to avenge your the lie you told us he's, he's dead. Right. You don't have to kill his daughter. So, but it was maybe one of the worst things I've ever watched. Wow. I thought it would be fun and give some of that film theory. Just like, Oh, here's some stuff he did. Yeah. First of all, I, it, this, I've always want, meant to watch it because I've heard it's good. Well, so did I. And yeah. I was at a, a record store a couple months ago and I've always wow. looked for, they had a copy, an original copy of the shining soundtrack. Which I'm always looking for. Me, 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 it was a hundred dollars. Oh. I was told they would set it aside for me because Whoa. I have a friend that that works there. She said I'm going to have him set it aside for you. It's a hundred dollars, and I said, <laughs> "That's fine. Just set it aside for me." Whoa. He sold it to someone else, <laughs> and so I'm I'm still looking for this. But then I, I go in there and I see one in plastic wrap. Right, it's in shrink wrap, twenty five dollars, and I was like, "There's no way," because you can't find them for. I'd say a beat up one is like fifty dollars. No one, no one has repressed this. The rights are too hard to get all of the different music for it. But so I, I was like, I think this is a bootleg. It's one of those places mm. where you know they sell some naughty stuff. Sketches. And I said, I think this is a bootleg. So I checked it. I checked the back. It was from the. Uh, it was, I think, oh, 
OHR, which stood for Overlook Hotel Records. <gasps> so I go, okay. I did some I did some digging. It's a bootleg. Someone took it. They made a, their own pressing of it on – but there's all these little hints in there. Instead of the Warner Brothers logo, it says Overlook Hotel. They made their own – that's kind of cool, though. It is. And I, I went to buy it, and the person working there also, they were like, I just bought this, too. It's awesome. And they're like, the, there's a cool color on the inside, and there's these little hidden things. Yeah. And that's fine. I was like, I just wanted to listen to, put right. on my wall. Fine with me. And then they got I, to talking I, to me about. I almost want that one more. Yeah, it's cool. Anyway, go I'm ahead. sure you could find it somewhere. No. Don't come over. So I we were talking about this documentary, and they said it was really fun. And some of the stuff is very outlandish, which was fine. I said, I'm sure it is. Yeah. Um, I start the movie and I'm like, is it the music's too loud? It's like they're taking shots of of eyes wide shut. Shots, 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 shots. And it's like Tom Cruise looking in the window of a movie theater and they've kind of superimposed like he's looking at pictures of The Shining. <laughs> and people are talking about the movie, but the music's so loud I can barely hear them. And so I was like, the music, I'm like, am I crazy? Spooky. Like the music's too loud to hear what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And I have this sound bar, not to brag, but you can hit uh, one, two, or three, meaning you can turn up, it will adjust and turn up all of the dialogue. So you can hear the dialogue better. I tried that at the highest setting, even though it makes it sound kind of artificial. Mm -hmm. And it was still like the mix was. All, and then so I stopped it on Pluto TV, went over to Canopy, used two of my tickets from the local library no. to purchase a rental. I started it on there. <laughs> same same thing. So I was like, it's not Pluto. The whole almost this whole movie, the 30 minutes I watched of it, there's just constant music. You can barely hear what people are saying. And then it gets into there's a guy talking, and this is exactly how he's talking. Um, there's a there's a, a there's a scene where guy um, he uh, he brings a you see Jack walk out with the um, the owner of the hotel, and as they walk by, a guy walks by them with like a bed. And then um, there's a there's a guy and he's carrying a table, and it's like okay, kind of a light kind of a light load for one guy to be carrying just just a table. And then someone has <laughs> a chair, <laughs> okay. And so they walk by, and there's a guy has a rug, and he goes up the hallway, <laughs> okay. And so and then Jack sits down. He's reading a magazine. If you look up, um, uh, uh, if you if you look up the magazine, you, if you zoom in, look up magazines, Playgirl magazine. Okay, he's reading Playgirl in front of his boss. Okay, interesting. <laughs> and then if you look at the cover on websites, it, there's an article in there about incest. Okay, interesting. Um, because you know. Because Danny got hurt, but we don't know how. What? <laughs> and then he he goes on to say, "Oh, then you start hearing noises in the background." And he goes, "Sorry, can you can you hear that?" It's my sorry, my kid is my kid opened the door and he's like yelling. And so then, so I realize he's doing like a Zoom interview. Yeah. So he's online talking. It, this is in the movie. The guy just left <laughs> all this in. And then he backs away from his mic and goes to the door and is talking to his kid and shuts the door and then comes back. He's like, all right, so, um, yeah, sorry, where were we? And it's just like they're showing just slow motion footage of The Shining with super loud music <laughs> while this guy's just dealing with his kid that came into his room. And we were just like, I, I truly could not believe. It has a 95% on Rotten Tomatoes. has a 55% audience score. Yeah. Which – Seemed almost also too high, but it was one of those people are like, ah, oh, yes, Stanley Kubrick's indubitable <laughs> movie, which is being delving into. And it's just like, it's unwatchable. It was crazy. <laughs> we couldn't believe it. It was just like, is it possible you watched a wrong version somehow? I, but I started two different, I found it on yeah. two different streaming sites. One is Canopy, which is like made for. 
yeah. documentaries and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, this is the one. It's got the photo of him. It was nuts. And I have to, I'm going to try to find it again, maybe somewhere else, just see if I can hear it better. <laughs> but I watched something else and I was like, it's not my TV. Yeah. It was bonkers. And then they're just talking about how like he goes into the office and they, there's a window in the office. But if you look at how the how they get to the office – there shouldn't be a window in there. And it's just like continuity stuff. Yeah. And he's like, there's a, there's a chair behind Jack in this scene. And when they show Wendy, they cut back and the chair's not behind him. And that's Kubrick. I think kind of playing with the tropes of a horror movie. I'm like, even if it is, (laughs) what is this documentary? Like (laughs) just, it's either a continuity. He's like, people, people say continuity error, but I think he knows better than that. Like the dude, like there's other people working on the movie yeah, and then they just, Oh, then one guy said after they show Stanley Kubrick in the, in the nude title, oh. in, the, in the titles of the movie, you can see Stanley Kubrick's face in the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, he goes, if you circle it on one frame, if you circle the area, it's kind of hard to see, but if you circle it on one frame, you can see his face. And then they go, they show the movie frame by frame. And I'm like, okay, they're going to circle it because we can't see it. And then it cuts to the next thing. It never circles anything. And it's like these people keep talking about things you only see in one frame. So I'm like people have gone through this like two and a half hour movie right. just frame by frame. And they're like one guy thinks it's about the the slaughter of Native Americans and like Jack is the white man. Uh-huh. And he's got some – I'm like I guess that's interesting, but I don't think that's what the movie's about. I mean, it's just a college essay. It was like where it you're was like, a, I don't know, it's about abortion, right? And then, and then you, you just reverse yeah. engineer it because that's you have what, to write a paper by. That's what he was doing. He's like, like, there's all this stuff that like shows Native American culture, and it's like because they're in a hotel, that that's <laughs> like the theme of. Yeah, and uh, there was just so much. It was it was bonkers. I want to finish it. It was just not fun to watch with. Uh, the the woman with whom which I live who was also who was not into it yeah and the music is so yeah <laughs> strange and loud and just the stuff they're talking about no one ever got to the point of why like why was the guy like it was kind of weird that guy was carrying one table <laughs> why I, was yeah crazy. why is that weird so that was fun but there is one thing I do want to talk about oh. I've been watching the Hellraiser movies Jesus <laughs> still no I'm a but I, there is one thing I do want to talk about before the – maybe we'll get to Hellraiser later. Oh. But I saw an actual movie that might surprise all of you. I went and saw a movie called Godzilla. <gasps> minus one, minus color. Whoa. You hear about this? Mm? I was looking for a movie to see. There's some bad movies out. Now I know why you're in Davenport again. <laughs> I had to get away and see a little monster movie. There's some Oscar movies out that yeah. I do want to see, but I'm getting the pass where you can do like four sure. of the best pictures for whatever, 30 bucks. Yeah. And those start in a couple weeks. So, yeah. and there's about four I haven't seen. So I'm just going to go see those then. So I skip poor things for now. Sorry, but I want to see Godzilla, which is something I've never liked. Mm-hmm. I hate to say this. <laughs> people love it. But we had to watch one for our friends over at uh, Attack of the Killer podcast. And I think I speak for both of us when mm-hmm. we say it was not good. Yep. I feel nothing when I watch it. It's just a monster destroying stuff. I don't get it. I've never seen the original Godzilla. But then I've talked to people where they've seen like all 100 of them or whatever. Right. And they, it's like their thing. So yeah. I, I just, it's just I never grew up with it. I never got into it. I don't really care yeah um i think there is also the culture of it's so bad it's good type of thing or like isn't it cool that i know about mothra yeah like like, mothra and you can see his strings in this one which i get for the old ones but then you've got ones from like 2000 which it's like so but it looks bad or something yeah they're they're making them the same way that they did back then and i knew for fun yeah i don't know i Go ahead. I'd seen Godzilla with Matthew Broderick. Yeah. Right? That was the one I knew. Yeah. I don't know if it's good or not. I just remember it came out and it was a big deal because it was Godzilla. Yeah. I and remember liking it, but then finding out later that it was bad. Yeah. From other people. Yeah. So I, I haven't revisited it, it myself. I but 
Eh, but well, now that you're a Godzilla guy, go ahead. Well, now Godzilla minus one, I wanted to see, and then I saw it said minus color. I was not privy to this re-release, mm. which kind of turned me off because I was like, I kind of want to see the movie in not color, just with them turning it monotone. But but then I did. saw that they didn't, and they said it actually is a little scarier this way. And we went, you know, scene by scene, and we made it. It feels more like the originals because it's black and white, but we really dedicated a lot of time to so i said okay i i like that it's it's not it's kind of like i don't know i have logan in black and white i still haven't watched it uh -huh. but i think it's they they put the time into it to make it like we're doing this because it's like the comics or yeah it fits the it fits the overall tone of the film in an interesting way mm -hmm. and so it was like this is definitely for people that have seen the movie and you liked it and if you haven't seen it this this could be the first way you see it like i would suggest seeing it this way first actually was like what the director said or something then just do that yeah which but, so i was like okay well but then i i because i didn't know anything about it i don't know why it's called godzilla minus one and then you could do godzilla's minus one plus color yeah anyway yeah, I don't know anything. Why is it called Godzilla Minus One? Well, tell us everything. I didn't know it takes place in 1945, so it's a war movie. So I said, okay, so this fits the era more. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's and uh, because I didn't, I, I'm so confused about all the Godzillas. Can we talk? We need to talk about Godzilla. We need to talk. Can that be? That's got to be on the. We need to talk about Godzilla. That'll be the TikTok. title. So you've got. In 2016, a movie came out called Shin Godzilla, which I didn't know there was like this. There's the Japanese Godzilla movies coming out, and then there's the bad American Japanese movies coming out. <laughs> Godzilla movies. Wait, bad American <laughs> Japanese movies? I'm thinking of... Uh, Kung Pao. <laughs> yes, thank you. I was trying to think of something that wouldn't be offensive. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. So you've got the American Godzilla movies mm. and Godzilla vs. King Kong. Bip and Kung Pao is funny. And yeah, we do like we do stand Kung Pao. So um, hard to find these days. Can't find it. So this is... Can't find him. <laughs> apparently Shin Godzilla is good from 2016. Then this okay. guy had to follow it up. And he said, I can't do... I can't do it based on Fukushima because that's what this last one did. And that last one was awesome, according to everyone. Okay. So we took it back to sort of the war mm. and the nuclear weapons, setting it off, sort of playing off the original Godzilla from is my takeaway. Anyway, my point is this movie's awesome. Whoa. It, it's, it's very scary. Really? From the moment it starts. The, the lady next to me, I'm not even kidding. It starts. It was also... Um, the, we've talked about movies being too quiet or too loud. Mm -hmm. It was truly one of the loudest movies I've been to ever. Did you see it with the woman with whom you live? No, she did not. She said, I do want to see it. She's like, I, I would want to see it. Uh -huh. I just thought she wouldn't want to. Sure. So I was like, I'll go to this by myself. Yeah. She was like, I don't think I need to see it in theaters. But I was like, but the director said <laughs> you have to see the black and white one in theaters. And loud. She was like, I don't know if I need to see it in theaters and go to the record store with you for two hours beforehand. <laughs> so just go yeah, sure. and we'll watch it in color or whatever later if it's good. Uh -huh. So I went by myself. I was glad she didn't because she hates when they're too loud. Right. And it was to the point where you're like, oh my, like it really gives you the, the, I really felt like Godzilla was right there with me. That's what I want. That it was loud enough to where you're like, this is what it would be like where it actually is. <laughs> it hurts your ears that Godzilla is here. So I thought it was awesome. The lady next to you did what? The lady what? next to me, she was like, if you're watching the video, she's <laughs> what? like, she is astonished for what? the first like 10 minutes. <laughs> and I was too. Yeah. But I looked and she was like, she's having fun too. <laughs> That's and the best. Then uh, at one point I was like, I had my feet up and I was kind of <laughs> tense. And I looked over and she's like, she had her fingers in her mouth like a cartoon. <laughs> 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 but it was awesome. <laughs> I love it. I yeah. loved it. I can't wait to watch it. You again. love Godzilla. It was cool to see it in in black and white because it is a period piece. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, it's kind of, it's kind of a war movie, so mm -hmm. I'm on board. Yeah, you love war. I love war. The I think the Japanese Bootlicker. just <laughs> they just know how to do it better. War? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we always win. Yeah. So I guess not. No. But they they take the story of this kamikaze pilot that has come back from war. He 
of course, as you can tell, did not kamikaze himself. Yeah. So he is a disgrace. Mm. So you're following sort of one guy instead of this just it's it's That's about already the people. <laughs> Such a crazy good idea. The story is is in itself so interesting that yeah. sometimes they cut to the Godzilla thing. You're like, man, I'm I'm like with <laughs> these guys, but then like Godzilla. I think is what the original Godzilla was supposed to be, which is it stands for something. Sure. It stands for this sort of like, so Godzilla minus one, yes. whatever the, I guess, uh, whatever the translation is, I, maybe it's not as elegant here, but it's the fact that Japan is at ground zero because they have uh, just dealt with the nuclear, nuclear bombs that sure. Oppenheimer dropped on them. Yeah. So this is in the Oppenheimer universe, un- <laughs> universe, unfortunately. So they're at zero, and now they have to deal with Godzilla. So it's like they're minus one. They are at below ground zero because they're already at their lowest. And now here comes Ding Dong. And he also, it's animated, but they use the, like, it looks like the Godzilla from the 50s where he's, like, walking uh, <laughs> weird. Really? But when he shows up and he's destroying stuff, that's the stuff I don't care about usually right. just because I'm like, I, anyone can do that. Mm-hmm. And it just is destruction for the sake of destruction. Mm-hmm. But it's, they do it. They don't do it too much. Mm. It's when he shows up, you are like, you feel bad for everyone. Yeah. I just thought it was great. <laughs> I can't awesome. wait to see it again. I got to see it. I, I almost went to it. Uh, f- well, probably a month ago now mm-hmm. when it was the color version. And I just decided not to. I don't know if he's. I don't. But like, yeah, when you Should. first see him, that I, I, because I read this too that you first see him, I think, with some spotlights or something, mm. and he's just in like coming up out of the water, and it's like, holy shit, <laughs> it's, I got, it's cool. I don't, and I don't care about Godzilla. Yeah, but well, I think I understand more like why. I mean, I knew that it was related to the war and stuff. Yeah, I'm not a complete idiot. I went to a fake film school, but uh, just the way he does it is so effective. I think he, you can tell he really cares about how much screen time and then like what they do to, when they're trying to figure out how to deal with the problem Mm -hmm. It's like, it's, it's fun Mm -hmm. and it's, it's like a funny movie and it's scary. I got to see this. You got to see it in theaters because Godzilla has to be big as your head. I got to see this. Okay. Hey, remember that time when we saw what was was it 2014 the Brian Cranston Godzilla? Yes. I think you and your brother came over and <laughs> I fell that, asleep. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I should have fallen asleep. I think your brother may have fallen yes, asleep. Yes, he felt I was it was just me and Brian Cranston. <laughs> I don't even remember anything that happened in that movie. No. There's it just kind of sucked. And people like that one too. They do, so but like, I think they never even show Godzilla. Yeah. And it's like but also they keep showing a bunch of actors I don't care about. There's something. <laughs> There's nothing there to pull me in. People like that. It's kind of like how children love big trucks. You know, <laughs> like kids love Tonka trucks because like yeah. that's like a big truck. Yeah. I get that. That doesn't really do anything for me. Mm-hmm. But I, I like the story. Landon, I thought I had a piece of popcorn in my throat. It was a lump. I was I, I was tearing up at the end of this thing. Oh my! It's such a good story. Like you're rooting for this this dumbass guy <laughs> who wouldn't kamikaze himself, so you feel bad for him. It just should we start saying that instead of unalive? I think so. Yeah. I'm sure that's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a it's good. Awesome. Well, we'll be sure to check that out. Thank you so much. I spent a lot of time working on it, and I hope you all enjoy Godzilla minus one minus color. Even that's just kind of funny. Yeah. I take back what I said about Godzilla. He loves it. I'm going to watch another one and not like it. Yeah. Bye. Bye. listening to the prescribed films podcast network home to hundreds of hours of free podcast entertainment the shows on this network all have a common goal 
providing you with the best discussions about movies and other forms of entertainment media. The PFPN hopes to fill your ear holes with audio joy. Visit our website with links to all the other amazing shows at www.thepfpn.com. Thanks for listening.